Dr. Strauss, would you briefly describe your educational and professional background? Uh, I did my undergraduate work at Biola University and going into college I was interested in both science and Christian theology. So Biola was a place where I could study both. Um, my major was something called physical science which was kind of a mixture of physics and chemistry and math. After graduating from Biola I uh, applied to a number of universities in physics, ended up going to UCLA to do graduate work. And so I got my PhD from UCLA in uh, experimental elementary particle physics. And it's also known as high energy physics because we collide particles at very high energies to probe the structure of matter. Um, after UCLA, I did a postdoc work with the University of Massachusetts and I worked at Stanford while doing that. There's only about uh, four or five labs in the world where you can do high energy experimental particle physics. One of those is at Stanford. So even though I was employed by the University of Massachusetts, I spent one day there in seven years and then uh, the rest at Stanford. And then uh, finally I got the job I have now which is as a professor of uh, particle physics at the University of Oklahoma. How did you develop an interest in the study of physics and cosmology? Probably my initial interest in science um, is because I'm a product of the 60s and I watched the U.S.-Russian space race and watching people go to the moon piqued my interest in, or perked my interest in science, maybe piqued it as well. Um, so I was always interested in science. Going to UCLA, I really realized that the fundamental questions about the universe um, were things that most intrigued me. And I think those fundamental questions are what's the universe made of at its most fundamental level and where did the universe come from? And I really focused on the former, uh, studying the fundamental particles of matter. But what's happened in the last 10 or 15 years as we've understood, as we understand more and more about the origin of the universe, the two fields that study the smallest elements of matter um, and the field that studies the largest parts of the universe, the cosmos itself, have, have come together. Because what we learn in our particle accelerators about the fundamental particles of matter is really probing back into time when shortly after the Big Bang those were the only elements there. So what's really happened in the last 10 years, these two fields of particle physics and cosmology have almost meshed into a single field when we look at the very early universe and the very smallest elements of matter. And so I think in the last 15 years in particular, as my particular field of study has overlapped more and more with cosmology, my interest in the origin of the universe has radically increased. What have been the prevailing scientific theories of the origin of the universe? Well, before the 1930s, um, most scientists believed that the universe was eternal, and it was called the steady state model. And even when the evidence for um, a beginning of the universe started to, to develop, both the theoretical evidence in the early 1900s and then the experimental evidence starting in 1929, even then many scientists held on to the steady state model. In fact, as late as 1959 or so, you would still find that although the evidence for an origin of the universe was quite um, prevalent at that time, most scientists still felt that the universe was eternal. Um, and that was the prevalent scientific model until really the last 40 years, maybe. How did the shift from a steady state model of the universe to the Big Bang model take place? I think what happened is scientists are looking for the best model that fits the evidence. And the evidence for uh, the Big Bang and the origin of the universe just became so prevalent that it overwhelmed the philosophical bias that scientists had towards an eternal or steady state model. And the evidence primarily comes in three forms. Um, first is the fact that the universe is expanding, like, like an explosion, although that's really a bad terminology. Um, if the universe is expanding, you could run the film backwards and it would come to a point when it actually had a beginning. Uh, the second evidence for the beginning of the universe is what we call the cosmic background radiation. And that's the leftover heat from the Big Bang. Much like turning an oven on and letting the heat dissipate throughout the house, the Big Bang was a very hot explosion or, or origin of the universe. And that heat is still around in the cosmic background radiation. And then finally, the Big Bang predicts how much primordial hydrogen and helium 
should be in the universe. And basically, we see exactly what is expected. In fact, now we see what's expected to about one part in 10,000. And so the evidence for the Big Bang became so overwhelming that um, scientists um, chose to give up other models in favor of this one, even though it was philosophically unappealing to some scientists.